Cross Session 5, uh, which is the front facing camera. So I'm trying to find a good mount to stop all the vibrations. And this guy is doing 40 in a limited zone. Interesting. Hi and welcome back to Tech It Out. I just want to start this video by saying there was nothing wrong with the camera setup I was using in that little bit of footage that you saw before the title screen. In fact, if anything, the unit I was using was working better than many other units work. Lavalier mics are not really made for using inside a helmet. They are really used when you put them on your lapel or some other part and they are set up for that. They pick up and they are very sensitive to picking up sound from your speech. They are tuned for that. If you want to see, by the way, what an electric mic is, I'll just pull the cover off here and it is that little thing. It looks like a, a little barrel I suppose. Some are thinner, some are smaller. This is quite a large one actually. So if I squeeze that back inside there and then you have your little windshield on top and they're sensitive little mics, some more than others and the one I'm using in that video that we started off with is a very sensitive mic. It's nothing at all wrong with the camera setup I was using to record. It was solely that the mic itself, the electric mic, is set up to record at that particular distance and it's not set up to be stuck inside a helmet like being inside a, a barrel and having all that sound concentrated on it and of course the sound of the motorbike as well. So it tends to over modulate and distort and that's the noise you heard from that video. Today what we are going to do is a, a quick and cheap hack to actually stop that. Now I <laughs> looked around the internet and there are many places uh, that talk about this problem and there are none that I came across really that actually give you the cure to it. Today I'm going to show you something very easy that you can do to turn down the sensitivity of that electric mic so that you can put it inside your helmet and it won't distort as you heard in that video. First thing of first then what you need of course is the microphone itself, the connection on it could be of all sorts, it could be a USB connection, the connection on it could be all sorts, it could be a 3.5 millimeter or one of the smaller versions uh, or it could be a USB as this one was, micro USB, mini USB, they all work in virtually the same way and the wiring in almost all of them is exactly the same. So first thing you need to do then is to take your electric mic, electric, that is not electric, electric mic and to cut it in half and in good tradition of all those old TV shows, here's one I prepared earlier. So here's my electric mic cut in half. Now if I show you the wires, there are generally just two wires within these. Sometimes there are three. One will be a braided wire, just metal, bare metal. And the other will be, it's like a reddish covered wire. And there is a plastic coating on it. It's very hard to see, I know, especially in the lights of the studio. But there is a plastic coating. All I've done with these two is cut them in half and I've tinned the ends of those ready. So let's just put that to the side. So we got that. The next thing you need is some heat shrink tubing or some um, electrician's tape. I prefer the heat shrink tubing. Makes a neater job of it and also helps stop any water getting inside as well if you uh, shrink it down enough. It shrinks through the heat and basically seals onto the, the wire itself. And finally what you need is an old headset. Now when I say old headset I mean the cheap nasty old gaming headsets that we used to get and uh, what you have to make sure of is it has a mechanical wheel on it for the volume. Now the volume on the headset is to adjust the volume of the headphones themselves for the sound coming into your ears and not for the microphone itself. Doesn't matter. That's what you need. You need that volume control from the headset like that and it's got a volume wheel on it and then again cut the wires off about 
three, four inches at maximum you need. And then inside there, and I'm gonna try and zoom in a little bit now. So inside here, we now have four wires. Well, I say four wires, the, the earth wire or the ground wire is multiple strands of wire loose and usually they don't have a cover on them. Uh, you can just twist those into one solid wire as you need that wire. The second wire will have a colour and the third wire will have a colour. Now sometimes this varies but most of the time it is very much like this. Most of the ones I've seen are like this. You'll have a, a braid, a loose braid, two coloured wires and then you have this red wire again with like a clear coating on it and that again just like on the headset wire there you can see they're virtually the same colour although that one's a little bit burnt that is the microphone wire and we don't need that one we don't need that one on this headset control at all you need it on the microphone you don't need it on this so we're going to cut that off immediately so it's out of the way and we're left with the ground wire and the two headphone wires. You can test this easily with a like a continuity sensor of some sort and uh, you can just put it to the headset uh, speaker and then just touch the wire and you'll find out which ones are which. The usual setup though, two colours and this red clear coated wire for the microphone. So that's set up now. I just need to tin these three off. I've already done the other side. And what I've done is I've bound together the two white and blue in this con configuration. Uh, doesn't matter if you don't, I've just done it out of, well, it's just easier. And I tinned the wire for the braided earth as well. So that's all one wire now. So I could just twist that together and then braid it up. Now, if you want to, you can remove the cover from the control itself and you can solder directly onto the board if you are more competent than I am. Uh, I'm not uh, up to that standard and I don't have a, a soldering setup that's good enough for that type of work. So I'm gonna do it the easy way. Uh, like I said, quick, cheap and easy hack. Okay then, so first things first, we have to tin up the end of the wire. That one's done. Uh, while I tin this one, it'll burn off the plastic on the end, so it'll take a little bit longer. A bit more solder. Yep. Okay. I've set the two clips up here because it makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to just put the two wires and wind them together into one clip and then what you want to do is have the wire from the plug end go into where the 3.5mm jack plug would have been so it's the opposite end to the end of this that goes up to the headphones so the headphones would be on this end the plug jack would be on this end okay so right on cue the battery died there and uh, we'll just pick up where we left off we've put the two colored wires into the clamp there and then we have the red wire with the plastic coating on it on this side line them up a bit and hopefully I'll be able to solder these together. Oh, I nearly forgot one thing very important and that is we do need a bit of the shrink tubing heat shrink tubing on there so I don't think that's soldered yet nope it hasn't so we'll just take that out of there slide it if I can get it in there we go slide that in there 
up out of the way for now. And let's try one more time. So the coloured wires going to the red wire with the clear plastic coating. Let's see if we can get it this time. And that's that. Now, I could have put a, a sheet, or a sheath rather, of uh, shielding on there as well. But as I haven't, what I will do is I'll just fold it over, get a appropriate size, and see if this will go on. And slide that over. Let's get a slightly bigger one. There we go. And that is done. That is it. Let's just pull back out again a little ways. So yes, that's it. The wires are soldered to the speaker wires of the old headset and controlled now by the volume control. So the amount of sensitivity of the electric microphone is now controlled by the volume control of the headset. I did try this out before soldering it. And I discovered that even with this turned on full, uh, that's the maximum, uh, it took away the distortion. But the best setting, I have marked it as you can see there, uh, is about a third to th a half of the way between all the way off and all with it, all the way up to maximum. So we're going to try this now and see what it sounds like in the helmet itself and see if it has worked and taken away the distortion. Okay, so now we have the microphone set and I've got the volume controller here in my hand. If I turn it all the way to the maximum and then I can talk very loudly in my helmet and as I talk I'll just turn it down so that you can see the sensitivity of the electric microphone being reduced as it is turned down. You'll find the position that's best and you'll set it to that. So if I turn it all the way up again, then take it about halfway, I think that'll be about it. And I'm talking really, really loud now in a closed helmet. So hopefully this will have cured my problem of an oversensitive electric microphone. For now, thank you for watching.